Bronx, the Wapinger Falls, New York, and the United States. Now the Doe's trying to come on a little bit. And again, right in front of him is Zuri Lawrence. Lawrence wants to do something uh, and attack when he comes in and not just waltz in like he did that time. This is a situation where you're in round three of the fight. If you're Bedoz, you try to work the body, thinking you can try to win this in round eight. When Lawrence is going to volunteer and fight in front of you, go to that body, pound the body, even if you don't win the round. Put that damage on the fighter, slow him down, and then he's there for you later. Well, Lawrence throws a series of uh, jabs that are all taken on the gloves. He might have got one throw, and Bedoz says, this isn't holding me up, and then he just attacks. He needs to come with more uppercuts when this guy comes inside and tries to fight him inside. That'll keep Lawrence off. This is round number three. Bob Sheridan with Dave Montempo. We're at Taj Mahal Casino and Resort here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Glad that you could be with us. Wild with a right hand. Verdot's just outside that wild right hand. And again, he's not getting the angles, Lawrence, is it? He's uh, choosing to stay in front. And Verdot is actually trying to move and maneuver himself into position. He's one of those guys that's right there. Two good digging body shots at times. He's really working on the body stuff. We talked about it at the beginning of the round, and he's working that well. You know, it pays off down the road. It counts as, as punching, it's good offense, and it will wear your opponent down. Then those double shots can come later. And for Lawrence, if you're Vidoz, you're thinking, this guy's lost seven fights. At some point in this fight, he'll show me why he's lost seven fights. Digging body shots down the left hook, and this guy, the book on him is he's an excellent body puncher, excellent left hook. I'm talking about Vidoz. And Vidoz showing some power there as he cracks him with a pretty good right hand that time. This is the best round thus far with uh, under a minute to go in the third round for Vidos as he's in the process of turning this thing around with uppercuts, good solid body shots he's getting in there. Defensively, he was able to avoid a lot of the jets. See this? Catching everything on the gloves, catching it on the forearms, dancing around to his right. Now Vidos uh, just kind of tracks him down, just stays right in front of him, doesn't let him get the angle. Looping right hand of his own, drives it inside, tries to dig upstairs. That he uh, lets the referee Ed Johnson separate the two. As Lawrence is cooperating by staying in front of Bedoz and not having the legs that he had in the uh, earlier segments of this fight. So Bedoz able to land the body shots, and then there wasn't much when Lawrence landed. And his legs look heavy in the knees with just a few seconds to go here in the third round of the Bell Sound. That's uh, Bedoz's best round of the fight. But stylistically, uh, the fight has uh, swung uh, very much in his favor. He's got a nasty cut over his uh, eye, though, and you'll have to tend to that. His right eye has that cut. It's not bleeding into the eye. Okay, Paolo. Tiene que empezar a ponerle presión. Si le da, si le pone cinco golpes juntos, dos abajo y tres arriba, se va a ir. Lo va a noquear. Pero tiene que trabajar. No puede dejar lo que vuelva. Terminaste la combinación. Tienes que moverte para el lado. No te estás moviendo para el lado. Te estás quedando en el mismo sitio. Comprende, ok. Tira tres, tres y dos golpes hasta abajo, dos golpes arriba y te mueves para el lado y vuelve con el, con el jab, ok. Well, well, with Lawrence deciding not to move on the angles, he gets right into Vidoza's territory. A nice cracking hook there. One of many good things he punctuated with the round, including the body shot. Here we go, round number four from Atlantic City. And now Lawrence tries to pick up the pace, but he's right in front of the guy. Digs one behind the elbow. Goes with the right hand, but those holds him off. Wants to load up the right hand or come with that uppercut. He's trying to get in position for a power shot. Just sort of feigning, fading. Instead, he goes downstairs. Lawrence tries to stay busy. Nice stiff jab. Cut Vidoz coming in, but Vidoz not hurt by the jab at all. He slips that jab by Lawrence. He's making Lawrence miss a lot more in the third round and here again in the fourth round than he did in the first two. But those just sort of a plotting heavyweight, but we've seen a lot of those guys successful. And Lawrence used some good angles in rounds one and two. Round three, stopped moving, got right in front of Vidoz, gets caught with stuff like that, the body shots as well. And you give a guy like Vidoz a chance to establish himself now, and uh, it's a tough road for Lawrence. He's making the fight stylistically much harder on himself than it has to be. He's been a little bit busier than has Vidos uh, in the early going here in the fourth. But Vidos, you know, really isn't getting hit a lot. 
It looks a lot better for Lawrence, but uh, the dose digs a hard body shot. Wild with that right hand, that left hand wishes past the nose that time. Got the jab in the face. Lawrence Walsh is in, no angle again. Digs behind the right elbow that time of Bendos. Bendos is not uh, apparently hurting. Well, we should say he's not apparently hurting. He does have that cut by the... But it's not anything that's taking the steam out of his sails at all. No, and he's happy to engage in a trade-off with Lawrence. And they're matching hook for hook on the inside. Bendos is happy to keep Lawrence right there. Lawrence is landing his best left hook to the body. They're doing absolutely nothing to Bendos, but it keeps him in the spot where Bedos can trade favorably. It's a good rate of exchange for Bedos. Bedos is uh, six pounds heavier, but he's trained down from a guy that was over 240, and he still has the power edge in this fight. Comes with a nice uppercut with the left hand. He misses that time and sails over the shoulder of Lawrence. Lawrence tries to get that elbow inside to fight him off. Question may become as we go the halfway mark and then beyond. What kind of legs will Lawrence have in the second half of this fight? Well, with the power of the body shots that Bedos has and, and has executed, Dave, you know the answer to that question. It's a matter of time. Question is, when will it hit him? As the eye opens up some more. We saw some evidence of that last round with some of his best shots not having too much on them. And it is interesting that he continues to decide to slug. How Bedos is just having it his way, sort of, because the fight is going his way since the uh, third round. Uh, Lawrence is certainly busy enough, he's trying, but I think the effect of aggressiveness is with uh, Bedos, at least in that round. That's a close round, though, buddy. Close gym, round. Bedos did a little more in terms of the power. Take a look at what they're trying to close up there. It's spread to a second area. Got the other okay. side of the By the way, in the state of New Jersey, Dave, at this point, we should point out that this is an official fight because it's after the scheduled amount of rounds in the state of New Jersey that you go to the scorecard. The important thing is uh, we did not see referee make any signal that there had been an an unintentional okay. hit button. So it could be an automatic, automatic TKO. That's, that's, that's true, too. That's when you get hit with the hooks in the right hand. Okay. 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 And there seems to be a little a bit of a slit on the, on the other side, over in Lawrence's side, right. too, they. Okay. See, they've got that uh, Q-tip in the uh, corner of the eye there, too. All right, here we go, round five, as it starts to get a little more interesting. Both guys have slight slits. The more serious of the cut by the right eye of Vidoz. But his corner's done a nice job working on that. Uh, Jose Rosario, Christian Trichy, and Oscar Suarez working in that corner. This is round five from the Taj Mahal, the Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City, New Jersey. I'm Bob Sheridan with me, Dave Bontempo. Hope you're enjoying these two big heavyweights working on each other. Zuri Lawrence in the black and red, and in the white trunks, the Italian champion, Paolo, the undefeated 11-0, Vidoz. And Bedoza's people would like to see this one stretch out all the way to eight so that he can put an eight rounder in his bank as he goes up. He's been six rounds the last two times. And as you climb up the ladder, you want the stamina checks. You want the eight rounders. You need the tens in there and then some twelves. This is the kind of guy you can get the eight out. Yeah, and Lawrence in his career, very, very difficult to stop and very difficult to be stopped by because he doesn't have tremendous amount of power. That was the book on him. And I, when I questioned him about that, he told me that he's been doing all kinds of strength work. And he's got a nice body on him. You, he's got the, you know, you know, plenty of bulk to his muscles, his shoulders, his back. And uh, Rideau's has a looser type body, which is actually better for boxing, believe it or not, folks. Well, Lawrence has the type of body that suggests he might also be comfortable back in the cruiserweight division. Yeah, but uh, at 229, that's a long way to go. You well, know, he that's... could get, you know, Yeah. he wears the 229 so easily. Yeah. Again, while with the left hand is a bit dull, trying to work to the body. Both guys showing a little bit of fatigue here in the fifth round. Lawrence is the busier of the two right now in the fifth and trying to turn the fight back in his favor. Kind of a pawing left hook to the body. No damage done at all. Lawrence has got to turn it up a notch, Dave. Yeah, Lawrence is slapping with his shots here, and Bedoz hasn't had as much on the inside. So what you're seeing is 
Yeah, throughout different rounds of a fight, this is a round that somebody's going to try to win cheaply, as they say. Maybe not that much offense, but try to steal a round like this. It counts just as much. Well, Lawrence is the busier of the two fighters, and there's only 35 seconds to go, and he's going to be in the process of stealing this fight as long as he finishes the last few seconds of this round the way he's done the first two and a half minutes. And don't let the judges take it away from him if uh, Vidoz were to do something like a really big, heavy shot. Vidoz is almost taking this round off. He looks uh, a little on the lazy side, and I'm sure his corner will have something to say to him about that in between rounds. But he was just flat out hustled in this round by Lawrence. Closing seconds now of the fifth. Good hard work by Lawrence. The bell ends the fifth round. Even if you're not all that effective sometimes, the perception of aggression is very important when the other guy is not doing too much. You can see him really sucking.